Hi folks, so I've had these uh, old wheelchair batteries sitting around for a, a few months now uh, and over that time I've been collecting together parts uh, to put together a mobile uh, power station. These batteries came out of a chair but they weren't holding the charge well enough uh, for use in that situation anymore so they've been replaced uh, but rather than just throw these out because they are still hold a charge they're just obviously not up to not up to power in the wheelchair for any length of time anymore. So it's 12.91 volts on that one and 12.91 volts on that one if you can see it. Uh, they are gel batteries. Um, I'm not sure if it has a ampere rating on them. So what my plan is, is to take the batteries and put them into the bottom of this uh, Stanley uh, portable uh, tool chest. You can see what it looks like there. And then I'm going to add to that uh, 600 watt inverter. So the inverter is going to be inside the box. And then to get the power to the outside I'm going to just uh, drill a hole through the box and run a wire to this outdoor socket. Just so the whole thing can remain waterproof. Uh, so that will be fastened on the side of the box somewhere. Along with a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter socket. And also the similar kind uh, but with the USB uh, plugs in it. So it's just going to be a handy little uh, portable power station. That we can either use down in the cabin. Uh, should we need any lighting or any electricity down there for music or whatever we just drag this down because the because the chest is on wheels and right, so it'll be easier moved about uh, these batteries are pretty heavy so that's why I chose the chest with the wheels so I'm doing first so I'm using some of this foam just to line the bottom and the sides of the container where the batteries are going to be that's to both protect the batteries from impact and to insulate them a bit uh, just in case this is getting left outside uh, or being used outside over the winter don't want the batteries getting too cold so just going to test fit the batteries now so there you go that's uh, how well the batteries fit in leave space uh, either end eventually I am planning on adding a solar charge controller to this so uh, I need like, all the available space inside so next up I'm just going to figure out where all the sockets and stuff are going on the outside Right, so I think I worked out the the double socket is going to go here on the end where the handle is. Um, underneath this lip, which protects it from the rain a bit, will be silicone in around the back of this, and it is a waterproof box anyway. But that just adds a, a bit of protection. And uh, I'm putting it on the front there, so it's uh, more protected. Because if I put it on the side, it could get knocked, and uh, so it's light when you're dragging it along. But that's always going to be lifted up with the handle there and I'm contemplating just putting these on the side of the box just here and then on the inside I'm going to use this tray uh, that comes with it uh, I'll probably uh, fasten it down um, either glue it or just uh, screw it down uh, just so it's, it doesn't move about anyway um, I might just use double sided tape it's quite a neat little tray, it'll keep all the stuff that I might need to uh, deal with uh, every so often like fuses and stuff all up a higher level rather than tucking it down the side of the batteries or whatnot. So I'm going to put the inverter there and then we've got the uh, fuses at the back and then we're going to have all the cables and stuff coming off those. Alright so I'll bring you back once I'm a bit further along. Right so I decided to go with the 112 volt socket there and the other the USB one just in the same position on the other side I've got to add switches for these somewhere but I'm not sure whether to just keep the switches inside uh, to keep them fully waterproof or, or what but that's all the sockets position just now as I said I probably will uh, add a solar charge controller at some point so I'll be hadn't so I'll be adding an external port for that to plug into, uh, possibly even a mains, a mains charging 
port, but I'm not 100% on that yet. Right, now I've got all the sockets in place. I'm going to start on next is the main uh, battery wiring. I'm going to be wiring these in parallel. So I'm going positive to positive to my positive uh, bus and then negative to negative to my negative bus. Um, should be pretty simple. What I'm going to be using is uh, some of this old amp wiring kit I had. As far as I know, this is a 30 amp cable. It should be all right anyway. We'll see. I've got a few lengths of this, so I'll just use some of these and uh, make up some uh, leads to go between the terminals and up to the uh, positive bus and the negative bus. Right, so that's all the uh, battery cables done. We've got the uh, two short ones for joining the two batteries together. And then we've got the uh, negative lead, which will come up. I'm putting a bolt through here, which will be my negative bus. And then the uh, positive side with the big fuse will come in, fasten around there, and then fasten onto there. And we'll distribute the eye from the uh, fuse box there. Okay, so that's the uh, two batteries wired up now. I'm coming through power. That's a uh, positive there. I need to put a shim or something in that side. Just to lift that up. That's fastened down. And then this is my negative here. So hopefully, we can do this. We got our positive coming into this bus here, and negative to here. And we got 12 point. 12.92 volts So that's good, we're going to leave it there for today and then I'll get on uh, tomorrow and uh, wire up all the other things from the fuse box Well folks, it's actually been a couple of weeks since I last filmed any of this uh, mobile power station uh, As you can see, I've now got it all working and what I've been doing has been uh, basically wiring and stuff which uh, doesn't make for a good video uh, so I just got it all done I'll just give you a quick run through of uh, what everything did so as you can see here I've got the the 12 volt socket on the side at the moment I've just got that power in this uh, little 12 volt fan but you could uh, plug any 12 volt device into that so it just plugs in there it's got the waterproof cover on it and what you've got here is a uh, the kill switch that uh, turns off all the devices as you can see and you can take that away with you if you don't want it to be left around and then here we've got the 240 volt uh, domestic type sockets uh, which is in the waterproof casing uh, so we don't get any nasty electric shocks and then I've wired this LED uh, to show when the actual mains electric or this 240 volt is on and then around the side here, we've got uh, the 5 volt USB sockets, double socket, one's 1 amp and I think the other's uh, 2.1 amp. So, and on that, at the moment I've just got my phone charging off it, as you can see up the top there, so that's just charging off that socket, and then on the 240 volt here. I've got this uh, gooseneck lamp. Just run off that just now. So you can see it working. So that's all powering. So that's powering that lamp. I'll just try it on the other side. There you go. That's the uh, lamp back on. Right. So and as I said, this key switch just turns off everything. Uh, so now just open it up and have a look inside. It's simple to open up, it's just got these uh, latches either side, which as you can see you could padlock if you don't want anyone getting into it. This lid, it's got this little toolbox, so you can use that for keeping a key in, or keeping the key in, two of them. Uh, as well as some spare fuses and a vocal. Uh, it got a few spare switches in case I want to add anything else to this. So, 
you've got all that stuff and if you want to leave this locked up and not have anyone to mess about with it you can actually just take that box off and uh, take it away with you just so no one can switch this on when you don't want them to you know, children or whatnot and then inside here is where all the magic is so down the bottom there you can see the uh, two batteries with the insulation around the sides to uh, stop the cold getting to them as well as to hold them tightly in place so we just turn the key switch on again you can see that's uh, where that's all connected in the back there one side goes to your positive terminal of the battery and the other goes through the fuse uh, to my main fuse distribution block and then here we've got the uh, voltmeter that's uh, switchable so you can turn it off if you don't want it running all the time and then this other switch here is for the 5 volt USB socket because that's uh, electronic it will create a drain if it's running all the time so that switch is to turn that off and here is, this is the, where all the negatives connect to uh, and they all connect to that and then go to the negative terminal of the battery and in here you can see the backs of the sockets this knot here is just to give a bit of strain relief and uh, this tray I've got fastened in place now just with screws on either side or screws on either corner uh, I've also drilled these holes here to create a bit of airflow um, to allow that fan to blow cold air or blow hot air out there are uh, vents along the side of this box I'm not sure if I'm going to need to add any extra vents to turn them off you can see on the side of the inverter here um, the battery's obviously connected um, and the inverter has power going to it but it's switched off so this red wire here is the one that goes to the LED and as you can see here it's not on even though the inverter is getting power uh, but it's not actually running so that light doesn't come on until the inverter is actually switched on so that shows you that there will be uh, 240 volts running uh, from these uh, sockets just for safety's sake and also uh, just so you know it's working um, because I'm just trying to plug stuff in and can't figure out why stuff's not working it's nice to have an indicator to show you where the fault's likely to lie so I've wired that to the actual switch in the, inside the inverter and that's about it all I can really think I need to do now is possibly um, add a few more vents and I'd also like to put some labelling uh, around these switches just so you know what they all are uh, in case it's not me that's using it uh, again possibly on the sides here and an unposition sticker or something there just so you know although if the key falls out you know it's not switched on so that's it all finished uh, made good use of those batteries as I'm sure this is going to come in really handy both uh, down at the cabin and up here at the house when we get power cuts so that's it thanks for watching bye for now